okay good point okay so let's move on um so we we've we've discussed a lot about yeah go on say, say it again. say it again all right should i move on hello let's go okay yeah, you can move on. I can hear you. Okay, good. So now, with all these uh, discussions, uh, whenever you're doing um, whenever you're doing a, a what do you call a planning, all right, a strategic planning and implementation, you always start, as we said, we always start with the stack as your situation analysis. But don't forget, in between that, you also have to look at your vision and mission statement. All right, your strategic planning always evolve from oh, no. please can you call this hello yeah <laughs> yeah i'm listening please can you record the yeah i've the show. can you i placed it on recording now okay thank you mm -hmm. okay so yeah we're saying that we should also be mindful that every plan actually evolve out of the company's strategic you know uh what you call mission and vision you get it because you couldn't actually have a plan without having the company's, you know, mission stated and then vision stated. What is the organization's, you know, mission currently? So in the tourism space that we're talking about, now currently, uh, if you look at Ghana's, you know, mission, for example, or what is Ghana known really, is about culture and heritage, all right? Now, that's what we're big at in, in, in the tourism space. You know, people know, uh, for example, Kenya has a very huge, you know, safari market, all right? Obviously, Kenya is also known within the space of uh, what do you call uh, a culture because with Maasai and co. But when it comes to Ghana, we're very much known for our heritage because of the slave trade, all right? Because obviously, you know that Ghana has, you know, the largest part of the, the world's, you know, castles, all right? Forts and castles, you know, globally. And, you know, Ghana is actually known as the epic center for slavery, all right? Although it doesn't look nice when you have to say it from that perspective. But it is also a fact of life that part of our history is that we were at the forefront, you know, of, you know, uh, uh, slavery. So if you look at the, the, the mission for Ghana, for example, we're much more within the culture space. We're much more within the heritage space. And as part of our vision, which you know, we started with Pana first onward. You know, the, the vision was to make Ghana the mecca for diaspora or for black, you know, people. So regardless of where you are, whether you are in Caribbeans or whether you are in America or whether you are in Europe, so long as you're a black person, Ghana is supposed to be your home. And you're supposed to have taken a trip to Ghana, a heritage trip to Ghana, at least once every year. And that's why we have the emancipation and then we have the Panafest. And fast forward, we started having what we call the Joseph Project, which Jacobi Chebilamte of Blessed Memory actually started, but we couldn't actually, I don't think we sustained it. And then of course, onward we have what the year of return. So if you look at Ghana's positioning within the tourism space, we're very much within culture and heritage, you know, and our vision is to make the country the the mecca for black people, all right? So having that particular, you know, vision and then mission, you know, on board, out of which you start developing your objectives, all right? The objectives for the, for the, for tourism space. And then of course, you know, it comes to your strategy. So the point is to be made that whenever you're discussing plan, all right? You discuss your strategic plan, whether it's a tourism marketing plan, or any other plan, it must devolve or it must evolve from your, you know, uh, mission statement and then the corporate, you know, uh, vision as well. Are you with me? Yeah? Can you hear me? Yes, Doc, we can hear you. Okay. So we've already talked extensively about the, the analysis of the environment, which we talked about. You should have, you should always have in mind that when we talk about the situation analysis, we're talking about 
the environmental, you know, the external environment and the internal environment. With the external environment being your macro environment and your internal being your micro environment, which is analyzed using the framework of a uh, pest for the external environment and the SWOT for the internal environment. Of course, you could have, I use other frameworks. For example, the seven S's, all right? You could use the seven S's, and I'm sure you've done the seven S's in your uh, management, you know, where you could actually look at the skills, the staff, you know, and the other the structures, et cetera, for your analysis. Then, of course, we, you know, I mean, having said the, uh, having you know, talked about the, the, the environmental analysis, is your objectives of the other O, all right? Now, when we talk about certain objectives, for example, what do you think are the key frameworks that we can use to set objectives? And then we can then move the conversation into tourism ob objectives. So when you have to discuss objectives in your plan, what are some of the frameworks that you're thinking about? Yeah? Hello? Yeah, hello, Doc. Yeah. Uh, I think from, from all that we have learned this semester, when we hear objectives, we think of the SMART, mm -hmm. the smart framework or the SMART principle. Mm -hmm. So uh, we so first and foremost, we always start with the mission and vision of the organization and the goals. Mm -hmm. And out of it, we decide to set objectives. And then in setting those objectives, we try to look at the SMART principle where it should be specific, measurable, attainable, realistic, and time-bound. Mm -hmm. Okay. It's a good point. So that is what comes to mind. Yeah, it's a good point. But remember that that's a framework to, to guide the objective setting in terms of making it realistic and implementable, all right? But in specific terms, you know, in marketing specific terms, what are some of the frameworks that you use for setting marketing objectives? Now we have seen your page, so we can talk about it. Of course, you can. But yeah, who designed, <laughs> who designed this one? Wh which author? I mean, which? Uh, is, is this not Ansof? That's Ansof, correct. So Ansof Matrix yeah. is what we normally use from marketing perspectives to, to look at objective set, all right? And obviously, like you said, you've seen it, so you can actually discuss it. Uh, who wants to discuss? You want to go first, Gilbert? Okay. So uh, this model was proposed by Ansof, as we have rightly said. And what he said was he looks at two different uh, metrics in trying to set an objective for a particular market that you find yourself in. So if you look at the first one that he mentions, which is uh, when you have a, a, the market is already existing, and what you are trying to, your destination is also existing, then what you try to do as an objective here is to drive market penetration. So you are working hard to sort of increase your market share, get more people to use the product, get more people to know of the product, drive it hard to get more share from the existing market and the existing destinations that you, you have. I don't know if I should talk about all the others, but for the penetration, okay. this let, is a... Let others also uh, explain it. So let's let's let me add more to what Gilbert says. So with answer of matrix, answer of says that the matrix has a two two sides, all right, the axis, and then the uh, what's what's it called? You know, uh, the what's the the name of the axis? X and Y axis. X and Y axis, all right. So on your on your is it X axis? Uh, obviously, you have your product. So you develop it. In but in the matrix is developed into four quadrants, all right? So quadrant one, you have a new, you have existing product, existing market, all right? That's quadrant one. Quadrant two, and under quadrant one, as well, under quadrant two, you have an existing product, a new market. And then on quadrant three, you have new product, existing market. And quadrant four, you have new product, new market, all right? And that's what you can see there on the, on the matrix. So new, existing, 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 new, and then new, existing, and then new, new. Are you with me? Now, from the, what the, uh, what do you call, uh, Gilbert explained is that 
when you take the first quadrant, which is existing product, existing market, and this way, existing destination, existing uh, uh, market, all right, you are looking at your source market, for example, Europe or America, all right, as your as your source market. Obviously, we are, we are having Ghana as our our existing, you know, uh, what we call destination. Now, after COVID, you want to ensure that you can penetrate more. So perhaps you're reducing. Hey, dog, you can do what? You sorry. Uh, you said you want to make sure you can do what? That you can penetrate. You can get more market because obviously. Okay. COVID had actually eradicated a lot of things, all right? Hey, Gilbert. <laughs> Gilbert. Okay. Oh, Gilbert. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Hey. Right. So you want to make sure that... Oh, can, okay. yes. <laughs> right. so, so usually, when you're doing penetration, market penetration, that's where you go by, you know, reducing prices, all right? So that you can actually push more to the existing market, all right? So say that people buy, you know, uh, they, they buy one trip. I mean, one individual coming on tourism, all right? But in terms of penetration, you want to actually give certain incentives to, to get the people travel with their families, all right? So you're doing more family packages that actually cost less. So you're telling somebody that if you spend 100 Ghana cities coming into Ghana, you know, as an individual, why don't you spend just about 120 and come with your family? All right, that's a penetration strategy. So you're making sure that you could perhaps reduce prices to get more people, you know, consuming the product more or to uptake the product more. And currently, as we we're discussing during the, uh, uh, the, the meeting that we had, George, I don't know whether you remember when the guy mentioned my name. You know, my proposition was that post COVID, most, you know, destinations or most tourism spaces would have to draw down pricing in a way that people can actually, you know, recover, can actually take up tourism because you have people thinking about essentials of life, people thinking about their mortgages. If you have any travel arrangement that is too high, people are not going to take it. So in my proposition, people or tourist spaces must even start tempting, you know, tourists with, in the destinations with a very low prices now. So if I were, for example, Royal Senchi, all right, I were the CEO of Royal Senchi, by now I should be sending messages to my existing client and telling them that for those of you who would actually come to Royal Senchi immediately after the COVID is over, I would slash it, maybe I'll give you 50%, you know, 50% low of the prices. I'll cut the prices down by 50%. Are you with me? Now, in this way, you're actually poaching people or you're actually tempting people to push forward their travel arrangement. Do you get a point? Are you with me? Hello? Hello? Yes, Doc, we are here. Yeah, yes, there was a, a network issue, but we are here. Yeah. Can you hear me? Yes, Doc. Yeah, we can. Okay, so my proposition was that as a way of recovery, all right, post-COVID, in fact, as we are on the lockdown, if I were a CEO of a hotel, I would start sending an email to my existing clients offering them 50% reduction, all right, if you take, you know, your trip or if you book your trip from now. So we don't know when it's going to end, but we are proposing that. I mean, a lot of countries are not thinking that Latest by September, all right? Latest later by September, we probably will be out of the woods, all right? Now, we have December immediately after the lockdown. My strategy will be that I could be sending people an email and say, all those who will book their accommodation at Royal Century by December, all right, for December, and you book it now, I'm ready to offer you, let's say, 50% cut. Do you get it? Now, the strategy yeah. is, it's a recovery strategy because you don't expect people to be taking on tourism by December because of what is happening. But because I'm offering almost 50%, almost like for free, some people with some money holding up would rather want to take that opportunity 
to, to travel, which means they want to push their travel plans forward to take advantage of the pricing advantages that I'm given. Do you get it? Doc, me cry if I get that, it will make me marry early so I can exactly. have my honeymoon. Exactly. So hey. That's a recovery strategy. So in penetration, you're looking at how do you entice the customer to push forward their decisions to uptake the product, all right? And if I were a hotelier or I were you know, anybody to deal with in tourism space as a manager, I would rather be sending emails. In fact, by the time I get a hint that perhaps we are likely to be out of the woods by September, and it's a solid decision that we will be out of the woods by September, I'll be drafting letters by now, sending to my existing clients and offering them 50% slash for them to take spaces by December. I can fill my hotel by December when others will be struggling. Are you with me? So that is how penetration yeah. pricing work. How do you bait your existing clients with certain juicy offers so that they can actually consume what they are not prepared to consume? Just like buy one, get one free. Some people go to shop and once they see buy one, get one free, they can buy the whole house even when they are not prepared to buy. Are you with me? So that's how penetration pricing works. All right. Yeah. Who else want to add yeah. or you want to move to the next quadrant? Yeah. Who else? Hello. I'm not hearing talking. Linda, do you want to take one of the uh, quadrants, one of the boxes, and explain what you would do? Oh, Frankie. Um, I think. Mm -hmm. Let me try destination development. Okay. Yes, and I would link it to. <laughs> I'll go back to Emory to it. Yes. Testing COVID nineteen. That's correct. Yes. Um. So, so it's um with the with the destination development is just with the tourist um the tourist um agencies or attraction sites, hotels, restaurants, um, flights, yeah. coming up with different strategies and products yeah. enable to serve their customers and win the market. Mm -hmm. So with the example of Emirates, even though COVID-19 is not over, coming up with this testing kits yeah. to just make their consumers and people um, safe. Mm -hmm. And in this case, it's going to, it, they are still going to get more markets after COVID-19. I know that other airlines are going to follow, but yeah. they would have already gotten the market Excellent. before the other airlines would come on board. Excellent. So it's all about uh, the, the market entrance. Excellent. Getting the, the customers first. Especially for people who are health freak, right? Some people are yes. so freaky that from COVID-19, they, they may not even want to sit by the next customer in a plane. Yeah, um, especially the people who go like they are germaphobic and that's other it. stuff like that's that. It. They would always, and they would even further go ahead to recommend this to um, either their family and friends mm -hmm. and even extend it to businesses as well. Exactly. So in this case, it's a win for whoever enters the market first with the product. Yeah, correct. So we're yeah. talking about developing a new product for existing market, all right? And just like in a, yeah. Nadia said, you, I, I wouldn't even be surprised to hear a, a flight coming out with another class beyond first class or business class, calling it platinum class, where there are only three people there. And those three people go through some rigorous testing before you actually get there. I won't be surprised. Yeah. You know, because mm -hmm. you're going to get people who are so health freak that they're going to think, Oh, once somebody coughs, no, I say, Jesus, I'm not going to be infected. And they don't want to even sit by the next person that they would want to, uh, to have a particular place, even for themselves alone. You're not going to have people in hotels who want a particular kind of treatment just to make sure that they absorb themselves from any possible uh, diseases. All right. So surely we're going to have yeah. some, you know, product being developed, you know, as a result of this. Don't forget, 
even when it comes to health insurance, travel insurance, we're going to have some travel insurance purely developed out of COVID-19. Do you get it? As a yeah. new product to be sold to. So you're going to have an insurance package that could have some, some kind of features, you know, em- embedded in them as a result of this issue, you know, and then being sold to customers. Mm. And as I said, we're going to see test kits on flights. In fact, I, I, apart from what you know, Emirates is doing, I wouldn't be surprised to see testing as part of the airport protocols. You know, post, post 9-11, then we started this, remove your shirt, remove your belt, remove your... Even very soon, they will ask us to yes, remove yes. our panties and things, right? Now, it's going to be <laughs> a time where, because of COVID-19, testing would become part of visa requirements, all right? So for you to even go for a visa, they would ask you to bring your COVID-19 test, you know, proof that you have been tested and therefore you are negative. Do you get it? We're going to have all these things. Done. And all these are going to be embedded in different types of products that we're going to see, you know, going forward. So, yes, we're talk- talking about how do we develop new products out of the existing, you know, issues and then sell it to the current market as, as, as a, a, a new, you know, uh, uh, product development, all right? Yeah, and even my thinking is that if you take Wuhan, for example, right, I won't be surprised mm-hmm. Wuhan becoming a tourist destination. Who will bet on that? I absolutely agree with you, Doc. Mm-hmm. Because uh, I have actually seen the Chinese uh, a Chinese advertisement on TV ah. where they are talking about Wuhan, how they came out, Mm-hmm. how they came together to help the community what is made up of and you know they know being reckless people they care they came together and actually we want to go there and see how the Thing. people are and how they survive exactly the in fact the very place that people say the virus emanated from i won't be surprised post COVID, mm-hmm. we're going to see a lot of traffic going there and who they call patient zero a lot of people, I'm sure, if the Chinese people do not want to be so protective and the family would have the opportunity to say that our patient was the patient zero, that is the one who actually had the virus and then onward, the this person can become one of the most visited tourist sites in this world, especially the home of that pe- person. Do you get it? And this is how new products are developed. Now, if you look at, you know, uh, Mandela and the way Mandela, Robin Island, what's the number? What was the number? Mandela's number. Um. Yeah, you remember Mandela had a Robin Island, the prison number. Yes? Yeah. And, okay, maybe, yeah. you know, yeah. Sorry. Yeah. Sorry, Doc. Yeah, the low county. Okay. Now Mandela had a Robin Island number. I think it was two 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 something something. Yeah, seven seven something. I I will check. You know. So so this is how tourism sites develop or you know places develop out of the unusual, out of the craziness emerges something. Look at Ground Zero in the U.S., all right? Ground Zero is one of the most visited areas in the U.S., you know? And if China will be transparent, where the virus actually emanated and the family, the person who actually died, the first patient's family, could actually become one of the highly visited tourist sites, you know, in, in history. Because, obviously, if you look at our generation, this... And then 9-11, apart from 9-11, this is the next major issue that has happened to us, isn't it? Yeah. You see? So this is how you, you, you generate. So we can actually develop information out of that, and then people would actually want to go and see, you know? The same way, as we speak now, I'm sure a lot of Ghanaians would want to see where the, the quarantine and isolation centers are. Hmm. You know, who, who who knows where the isolation centers are or the quarantine centers? Who knows? Where they're, they're in hotels. 
the hotels. No, they are not only in hotels. So only the- some outside are crap. <laughs> yeah, some outside are crap. Like in remote. The- yeah, there's some out like in remote. I don't remember the name, but I know there is. The- I watched a documentary on that. Yeah, I also saw there's some elsewhere. Exactly. Yeah. And, and do you think that after COVID-19, people wouldn't like to go and see those places and how their inside were? In fact, no, 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 not, not, not Ghanaians. No, oh, Ghana, don't go and take pictures. Even, ah. even those who had the COVID, all right, I am sure that people are anxious to know who they are and then to know their stories. All right. To be honest, as I sit here, I actually want to know, you know, the story of how somebody contracted and they, how they felt and how. But say, uh, not not for the good. Yeah, we're listening. Frankie. Hello. Yeah, say. Yeah, we're saying that, but it, it, will, it will not be, it will not be for a good reason, especially in Ghana, where you know stigmatization seems to be something bothering us. No, the same thing. Well, most people. Would... It depends on how you manage, yeah. and that's what I'm saying that. It depends on how the country wants to package it and sell. You forgot to talk about slavery. Slavery has a slur on yeah. it. All right. Today we are not shocked. Yeah, but yeah, yeah. The same way exactly, slavery has a exactly. on America. America is not shy away sure. from talking about it now. It becomes part of the narrative, part of the heritage, isn't it? So it depends on how the country yeah. wants to package yeah, so, so, it. Yeah, so so it will take long. It will, it will, no, it will really take it will, quite a long time. It will take long if there is no strategic. Okay, never mind. If it will take long if there is no strategic approach to it. All right, but okay, yeah, because in the beginning, terrorism wasn't even a uh, part of the Ghana government consideration, isn't it? So, the slavery we never had any, you know, strategic way of promoting it until 1992, when Jerry Rollins and Co started thinking about tourism. And then started packaging, uh, what do you call, uh, Panafest, isn't it? So in the same way, yeah. if we do not have a positive attitude and strategic approach to marketing it or to promoting it, it would take long. But if you want to take a strategic approach to a positive side to it, you can actually put it in a way that it would rather become a must-see as opposed to... Sure, sure, sure. Yeah? Sure. Yeah, to be honest with you, those who have actually had COVID, they could actually have a speaking role. If I was some someone who is managing somebody, I could end up actually getting the person to be a thought a thought leader on on uh, what do you call Help. Not, social distancing and some of these things. All right, uh, because the person has had yeah. an experience, he could start talk mm-hmm. about, and you can have a lot of people wanting to listen to this person. You know, what were their feelings? What was going through their minds? You let one of these talk show guys delay or whatever, wanting to host one of these guys. I'm telling you, the eyeballs and people who watch that program, they are oh. Dog, they've started. They've Kojo, started. Kojo upon Kuma brought uh, one, um, was it yesterday's pre- presser? Okay. The guy can speak about four or five local languages. Wow. And he was giving his experience as a married man. As a married man, how he got infected, how he isolated his family. It took almost two days before the ambulance came to pick him after he got a confirmation of the news. And apparently, he's been interviewing on almost all local radio stations, on TV and all of that. And it's actually even affecting his job because now people are beginning to stigmatize his job. So well, he's now taking it out. But he's now, he's now a star. That's the point. And the government used him. Yeah, he could speak about five local languages. Exactly. So now he can go on education. In fact, he can even abandon his job and start charging the government for for COVID-19 education, you know, telling people. I, so these are how things work, you know, depend on how you manage it, all right? Okay, so who would explain market development? Yeah? Who's going to explain market development? The class is done. Pump up, pump up, and let's go. Yeah, I'm listening. When you explain it, you understand it better. Yeah. So yeah, who is explaining? Um, Doc, I want to try. Let me try. <laughs> okay, 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 go ahead. 
No, you go out, continue later. Eh, Piggy and Kakra, make it fast. Okay, for the new markets, I, I think um, in the beginning we we're talking about the virtual um, VR and how we can leverage on all of these for um, tourism development. Mm -hmm. So I'm thinking that these are um, new markets that can be developed um, within the tourism space. That's correct. So, um, yeah, we can actually have firms that may come up that will not even have a fiscal um, place per se, but yeah. will just be using QR and those things to make people patronize and yeah. tourism. Yeah, amazing. That's true. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, let's take, for example, you know, college students, all right, who do not have, you know, means to travel, but they have aspirations to travel, all right? Increasingly, once you activate, you use VR or digital tourism, and promote the destination on, let's say, LinkedIn or, let's say, Instagram, right? You are now creating aspirational markets. People who are at college, maybe in the U.S., in the U.K., et cetera, who do not have the means to travel now, but they are seeing the destination and they are adding destination to their travel plans in the future. Do you get it? So you have existing destination by using the opportunities offered by technology to create concepts and to push it to markets that are not currently ready to participate, you know, but they can actually activate that. They can actually watch your destinations on, on uh, what do you call, Instagram, on social media, and then thinking, wow, this is the place I would love to go when I have the means. Do you get it? So you could actually make those markets ready, you know, whilst you're activating on social media, getting to know them, putting certain references, they're getting them, I mean, currently, Ghana, Ghana Tourism Authority is doing stay home, no Ghana, all right? The stay home, no Ghana is actually targeting Ghanaians, which in actual fact is actually a new market. It's a market development for them because destination, I mean, local tourism or domestic tourism is not a big part of Ghana tourism. We have always been, you know, looking at source countries. Now, we see the challenges that we're facing as, you know, the possibility that we can have dwindling you know, inbound market because of COVID. A lot of people in America, in US, uh, in UK and elsewhere will be thinking about their mortgages other than traveling. Okay, we are looking at recovery and we think that we probably can recover faster with domestic tourism. So why then don't we activate, you know, digital tourism to target Ghanaians so that Ghanaians can see and appreciate what we have. And perhaps once the lockdown is ready, People can start participating in local tourism, in domestic tourism, and we can use it as a jolt, you know, to recover. Do you get it? So that's exactly the kind of thing that we are looking at when it comes to, you know, market development. How do you use existing products, and then with the advantage or with that, uh, the the opportunities that you have with other environmental factors to create a new market, you know, going forward? That's what we're looking at, all right? And then of course diversification is moving completely to domains that are previously not yours, you know, either with new product development, with new market as well, all right? So you could look at, for example, mice, for example. Mice is not so much Ghana's, you know, uh, uh, approach. But Ghana can decide that, okay, with the advent of, you know, perhaps new competitors coming, especially from Asia, why don't we start looking at conferences and exhibitions targeting Asian firms, you know, into Ghana? That could actually be a diversification. Or diversification for a typical, you know, tourist company could be perhaps moving into, you know, the, the spaces of, you know, uh, uh, homes, for example, affordable housing. So you could have, you could have made a lot of money within the tourism space, and you want to channel that capital into other spaces where, if there is a downturn, like now we're experiencing a downturn, perhaps you could actually be following on your local, you know, housing, you know, market where maybe there is a huge demand for new homes, affordable homes, and I'm plugging the money there so that people could actually, you know, you can actually build some kind of resilience when there's a downturn in one of the markets. So you're in tourism, there's a downturn, but it's not affecting you so much because you're in other, you know, markets, either, let's say, in uh, what do you call it, telecommunication, or you are in uh, banking, or you are in, 
some kind of other success that are unrelated to your existing strength, existing market that you are operating in. Are you with me? And that's diversification for you. Okay. All right. So having actually explained that, uh, I mean, I think we should we should be wrapping up. I'm sure you guys are tired now, right? Let's look at strength. I'm oh, hungry. You're hungry, right? Yes. Oh, should I order some pizza for you? Yes. <laughs> okay. So I order you know digi digital digital. <laughs> Because right now everything is digital. Digital pizza. All right. <laughs> okay. So let's go to strategy. Yeah. Yeah, you can't hear you. Say it again. Hello. Hello. I think it's not too right. Yeah, his network is not good. Okay, so uh, for pass house or something, he's already. Yeah, uh, you say. Hello. All right, let's go ahead. So, I mean, uh, the next is strategy. All right. So obviously, when you come to strategy, you're looking at how you use your STPs, yeah, your segmentation, targeting, and positioning, you know, as one. And then using what we call the Potter's diamond, you know the diamond, all right? The differentiation, the cost leadership, and the niche, all right? As uh, another framework for, uh, for you know, uh, discussing strategy. And as we know, the segmentation you're looking at your your basis for segmentation, the geographical, the demographic, the socioeconomic, the behavioral, you know, which is the lifestyle, you know, uh, segmentation. Are you with me? Are you following? Yeah. Okay, but I suppose you guys are tired. Let's close. That will continue next week. Yeah? Oh, we can continue. You can continue? Yes. Are you sure? The class is quiet. Let's continue next week. All right? So that you can rest. Guys? Yes, please. Yeah. Okay. Hey, yummy. Yeah, yes, so. <laughs> <laughs> I was not sleeping. I was following you. The way the, way the class is so quiet, I think we have to close and then we we'll, we we'll continue next week. Uh, yes, the so, energy level is gone so, now. Yeah, and I can feel it. I can feel it from here because I'm the only one talking. All right, guys. So, thanks for coming with Nanadra and Frederica. <laughs> oh, Charlie. Yeah. yeah. Immediately, I typed, I want pizza. No, Doc, like Doc was in the spirit. Seriously. I'm <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys. So, continue <laughs> next week, yeah? Okay, Doc. Okay, have a fantastic okay, weekend. Doc. And don't forget to stay okay, safe. Bye. All right. Um, okay, please, I want well. to ask a, 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 a question on the side. Okay, yeah. All right. Um, I want to ask a question on this. It's not related to the class. It's about our uh, long essay. Yeah, yeah, you can. I want to ask. Yeah. In line of in line with the new timetable. Yeah. Does that mean that the deadline for submission is in October, or it is? We should safely assume. I think there has been a push for submission date. They've pushed it forward. I have to cross check. All right. Uh, who, who are we expecting next yeah. week? Can you hear me? Oh, don't worry, I'll be. Yes, Doc, we can hear yes, you. Yes, Doc, we can hear you. Yeah. Hey, Ella, keep quiet. Yeah. So I was saying that I think there has been a push for the submission date. I have to confirm. 
I, okay, though. Yeah, but I I suspect that they they pushed it forward a little bit. Yeah, and, and okay, because it, it has July and it has August, so we so can July and October. July and October. Because July and October. Yeah, so it's confusing whether it's July, whether it's October. Okay, I'll get a confirmation and let you guys. Okay. But, okay, dog. What will be the case? We are on it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, uh, they've asked us to ensure. <laughs> they, they've asked us to ensure that you guys don't actually uh, put yourself in a harm's way as you collect. Yes. Money. So everybody must try to use everything e right. And yeah, yeah. I, I suppose, uh, Fabrica, even <laughs> we're going to use digital anyway, isn't it? Okay. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So. I think that um, okay, we're okay. trying as much as possible. And where possible, we can use secondary data. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay, mm -hmm. All right. Okay. Okay, yeah. okay. So enjoy your thank workout. You. And stay safe. You too. You too. Anyway, you too. Okay. Bye-bye. Bye. 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 Bye.